When it comes to science faith issues, there probably is no issue of greater importance today, at least among evangelical and conservative scholars and even Christians in the pew, than the question of human origins. And we're hearing many people say that there's overwhelming evidence for human evolution, and as a consequence, where you just simply have to abandon a traditional historical understanding of Adam and Eve being the first human beings giving rise to all humanity. And the message is we have to accommodate human evolution in our biblical interpretations and our theology. Travis, uh, can you help us make some sense of, of this controversy? Um, as a scholar, when you look at the biblical text, uh, how do you read the, the, the text? Was there a historical Adam and Eve? How do you interpret the text? Uh, were they the first human beings that gave rise to all humanity? Well, my answer to both questions is yes. I do believe that there was an historical Adam. It's very hard to interpret Genesis as um, being anything but a historical presentation of the first two humans who gave birth to the human race. I think the biblical evidence for this would be, first of all, that the genealogies in Genesis connect Adam to Abraham. And since most biblical scholars are willing to grant that the Abrahamic material is of the historical genre, it's hard to just dismiss the chapters preceding that as mythical or non-historical, um, or else you have this arbitrary bifurcation between Genesis chapters 1 through 11 and Genesis chapters 12 through 50. Um, and the historical evidence that they're the, that Adam and Eve are the first parents of the entire human race would especially be found not only in the genealogies themselves, which imply this, um, and not only in the genealogies um, from Noah to Abraham, which implies that the nations of the world come from this family that uh, got off the ark after the flood, but when Adam names the woman Eve in Genesis 3, the word Eve means living, and it says in the text, because she is the mother of all living. The clear implication there is that she is the mother of the entire human race. Beyond that, in Acts 17, Paul does say that from one man, all the nations, all the races came. And Paul is very wont to draw a parallel between the historicity of Adam and the historicity of Christ. He is saying, in Adam all die, in Christ all are made alive, and that is much easier to interpret. Um, it is easier to interpret that reference as the fact that Adam is the first human, we all descended from him, and we inherited his corruption. His sin became our sin. And also in Luke uh, chapter 3, Luke traces a genealogy from Jesus, whom he, he is clearly indicating as a real historical individual, all the way back to Adam, whom he calls the Son of God. And so, as far as Luke is concerned, the historical continuity between Adam and Jesus is secure.